It is generally held that preemptory norms necessarily entail erga omnes obligations, but that the reverse is not true. The notion of erga omnes is therefore wider than that of jus cogens. In any case, the notion of obligations erga omnes is also used to refer to fundamental obligations. But those obligations are essential either for the international community as a whole, or for a group of states. When the obligations are owed to a group of states, for instance the parties to a treaty, such obligations are called erga omnes partes, which means erga omnes between specific parties. The concept of obligation erga omnes is specific to the law of state responsibility. Under that law, an obligation erga omnes may be defined as an obligation owed to the international community as a whole or to a group of states in case of obligation and governance partes. What are the consequences of a rule being ergaomnes? The primary consequence of a breach of obligation ergaomnes is that all states, even those which did not suffer any material damages, in which we are not therefore materially injured by that breach, have a legal standing to invoke the responsibility of the state that violated the obligation. Imagine that a state commits a genocide in a neighboring country. All states, even those that are not affected by the genocide, may legally invoke the responsibility of the state which has perpetrated the act. They may also require the cessation of the violation, some assurances and guarantees of non-repetition, and ask reparation in the interest of the injured states. Let's now analyze whether IHL norms may be considered as preemptory norms and entail erga omnes obligations. <laughs>